Hello, and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 440. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is Thursday, May 23rd. May 23rd, 2019. Because um, everything is tomorrow. Stash Dash, oh, SSK classes. Your last day of school. My last day of school. All the things are tomorrow. That's um, the only reason why I know that. I am trying to cast on and count at the same time. Well, how about I go first, and then you can cast on while I'm talking. How about that? 48, 49, 50. Yeah, you go ahead. Okay. So, I'm going to say a number real fast. Go ahead. I'm not counting at the moment. Okay. I am knitting on a baby blanket. This is out of Karen. Karen Chunky Cakes. They're as, like, big as my head. Um, we got these from Michael a couple of years ago. Well, like a year ago. Not our individual Michael. The store Michael's. Michael's. <laughs> um, which is a big box store. And our friend Holly was knitting a charity blanket out of them. And I was like, that's super cute. That would make good baby blankets. So Leslie bought me three. I think they were $6 each. And I'm using two for this baby blanket. So I'm going to have one left over. Which means I'm going to go buy another one. And then I'll have enough for a second baby blanket. Because the whole purpose of Stash Dash is to get rid of Stash. This is true. But all I end up doing is adding more Stash. So what I decided to do was I've been kind of in a rut with my knitting lately. Um, I want to knit, but I, don't, I have no brain space right now for anything. So I cast on 85 stitches. And I'm just knitting in garter on size 10 and a half needles. And it's around 30 inches wide. And it's going to be around 30 inches long by the end of the second cake. The yarn is acrylic. It's 100% acrylic. Um, and acrylic doesn't absorb the moisture in air. Did you know this? Um, I learned that acrylic doesn't block out oh. when Laura sort of broke my heart when I made my first Central Park hoodie. Oh, yeah. Out of Barocco <laughs> something. Comfort. Yeah, it was almost 100% acrylic. Yeah, it was 100% acrylic. Yeah, and I was like, oh, it'll block out. And she's like... <laughs> Anyway, um, acrylic does not absorb moisture in air, and we live in Mississippi, which is fairly humid. So as I'm knitting with it, it's got almost um, a damp feel to it because it repels that moisture mm -hmm. in the air. I'm trying to think of how else to phrase that. Um, so it's going to be good for a baby blanket, but it's going to be like, it's a thick baby blanket. It's going to be like a tummy time blanket where you put it on the ground for tummy time versus sleep with. Because no, like acrylic Pearl, also melts. Pearl needs some tummy time. Pearl gets so much tummy time. Pearl's my dog if you're new to the show. She's a great Pyrenees and she gets all the tummy time because she's lazy. Um, I came in today and she was sleeping on my bed and she was like, oh hey, you're home. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Try not to make too much noise. You're, I'm sleeping. You're here early today. Why? <laughs> what's happening? Um, whatever. So, 85 stitches, 10 and a half needles, just knit, 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 knit. It's actually going pretty quickly. I cast it on Monday night. So, not too bad. And it's going to take two of those cakes, which is around, I want to say 500 yards. Stop saying numbers. Sorry. It's like a knitting podcast. Around 600 yards. Each one? So, well, each one's 297. Oh, okay. So together around 600. It's going to be a big baby blanket, I feel like. But yeah, it's squishy. And I think the person who is getting it will appreciate it. It's for one of my favorite coworkers. I wanted to be able to give her something um, before we left for the summer. She's not due till the last week in August, first week in September. But she has some health concerns going on, so I wanted to get something that kind of cheered her up yeah. a little bit, for sure. So that is the first thing on my needles. The second thing on my needles is in my that squirrel bag. And that's living in my giant Tom Bin bag. Because it's giant. This is like their shopper too, I think. Yeah, I sort of scoffed at Laura when she got that, because she's a little bit of a Tom Bin nut. Um, I have a Tom Bin sticker on my laptop. But it does seem like a really great bag for taking to a festival. Oh, yeah, and it folds down, and it's got cup holders in it. See? Yeah. It's super handy. 
I have a more structured version of this bag too. Um, but I really like this one because it folds down and also has a key fob for your keys. So it's great to load up with stuff um, for picnics or to go to a festival. And it folds down like you can squish it down real small. So it's, it's like great a reusable for shopping bag, sort of. Yeah. But and you could even falling. use it as checked luggage if you needed to because the top zip's closed. And so it's made out of that rip stop. Yeah, if you overspent and needed another bag. Anyway. I like there's there's stuff. We are not lasted. endorsed by Tom Ben. <laughs> there's stuff lasts really really well for me. The second thing I have on my needles, it's so wee, is a wee Rose City roller out of Knit Picks Felici, in the dark side colorway. It's on size zeros. It's cast on sixty. Well, I cast on sixteen, then I increase out. I'm doing this one toe up to 60 I cast on 16 on each needle so 32 total and increase out to 64 total you're saying numbers again I'm sorry I'm not counting right now I'm just being a jerk <laughs> um and now I'm at the point where I can go round and round and round so this is what that yarn looks like I'm knitting on size zeros and I've actually worn the finish off on these addies which is pretty funny it's down to the brass and points so that's interesting and these are sock rockets they're my favorite sock knitting needles so I'm hoping to make this is what I'm taking with us to stitches um both of these that I'm hoping to get done while we're at stitches just hanging out with folks and having a good time and those are my two works in progress that I'm going to talk about in this point. I have another one to talk about when I show my finished objects off. So that's it for me for this moment. Okay. This is the moment. Well, my moment won't take very long. Okay. Because um, this is my work in progress. Aww. Um, I just cast on for the Mesa sweater wrap. And... I printed it before I came upstairs. And then left it someplace else? No, I left it downstairs oh. where the printer is. Um, but this is a pattern by Romy. I love Romy Hill. It is essentially a giant rectangle with holes for the arms. And it's... Um, it's one size fits all? Or? Yeah, it's okay. a single size. Um, and it's designed in only three colors. But I've got um, one of these kits from Miss Babs. But this kit was not intended for this no. pattern. Um, this was a fading point set. Oh. Um, that would be, is that the Hohe one? Yeah, that would be good for that Hohe one. Yeah, I don't particularly love square or rectangular. Oh, I love a rectangle. But I just really loved the colors. So goes in this order. It starts with this dusky gold and then goes to sort of a dirty water gray to a lighter gray to this really pale pink to this rich pink. Um, so the colors are dusk, uh, dunes, white peppercorn, sugar, and embellish. Hmm? I love white peppercorn. Yeah. It's pretty. So um, this, I'm knitting this as a gift. Um, she won't see anything for four months. Oh, okay. Well, I'm knitting this for Mama Linneman. <laughs> She's is, in Alaska for four months. She and, uh, this is Laura's mom, and her mom and her dad are on a long trip to Alaska and back. Um, they're driving from they're in Tennessee. North Dakota right now. Through, they went through Fargo last night. Yeah, and they're going through Canada to get to Alaska. I mean, clearly they have to. There's really no other option. Unless you're taking a boat. Yeah. Um, or flying. I don't know that I like anybody enough to spend that much solid time <laughs> with them, including the person I married. Pretty sure that wouldn't work. But, you know, whatever makes you happy, you rock on with your They're bad self. They're at Theodore Roosevelt National Park tonight. Yeah. I have uh, that itemized itinerary. I'm sure that you do. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I couldn't decide on what next to knit for me. So I was like, I can't knit nothing. Yeah, that's not an so, option. So, I'm just going to knit this. Maybe it'll be done for SSK and it can go in the try it on room. That'd be amazing because the one size fits all sometimes does not work for everyone. I agree, 100%, yeah. So, I'd love to see this where um, people, because this has actually been on my to knit list for a long time. Yeah. 
So I'm interested to and see how it And it's just, there's a little panel of about four inches of lace. Um, it's a rectangle, um, it, but it's about four inches of lace, and then the rest is just carter. So I'll just um, fade in the colors as I get close to the end of them. That'll be it. Cool. Um, I'm excited to see this. And this is your, the last of your SSK stash from last year. It's the last year. of my SSK yarn, with the exception of some little singles that I got from like mini leading skeins. men. Yeah, they're mini skeins that I intend to use for color work at some point. But I'm kind of not really counting them because they're, they're little minis. They're not real yarn. Um, but I do have some fiber. I do have four ounces of fiber from Spotted Circus that I would like to spin up as well. I would like to finish that. Now, don't get the impression that I'm pious and I bought nothing <laughs> since SSK because that is flat out <laughs> untrue. But I did want to try to use what I had bought before this And Amy SSK. Florence is a cool thing where she takes yes. a picture of her stash after um, like what she purchased at an event. And yeah. then so she... she'll lay it all out on the floor or a bed or something, a flat surface, and she'll take a picture of it. And then as she uses it, she goes back and edits that picture to like color in the yeah, areas. Yeah, she colors in those areas, which is really, really it's a cool It's simple way and brilliant. It. Yeah, I'm yep. totally stealing that. Um, uh, Amy Florence is uh, Stranded Dye Works. Yep, and she's um, got a podcast, the Strand Stranded Dye Works podcast mm -hmm. on YouTube. She lives in the UK. She does. On the south something coast of England. There you go. <laughs> that's as specific as I can get. Um, I think that's probably as specific as she would like that's us probably to make <laughs> as well. Um, let's see. Oh, I do have finished stuff. I'll show Yay, you that real quick. Yay, I want to see your finished stuff. So... Oh, yeah, I have seen your finished stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, they haven't had their baths yet, so the ends are still... They've been woven in, but they're still hanging out. Um, which end is the bottom? So this is the Willow Cowl, and this is out of um, Expression Fiber Arts in her pearlescent worsted base. It's sort of a... It was a, a merino silk, 50-50 um, silk. Sorry, 50-50 single. Um, but it is half merino, half silk. Um, it's really, really nice to work with. Um, because I prefer super sharp needles, it did split a little bit, but that's just the way that I knit, and I knit on sharp needles. If I had used bamboo, sharp needles, yeah. um, I wouldn't have split the yarn. But I like this cowl because it actually sits the way a cowl should sit, in my opinion. Um, because it's wider at the base, Yeah. and then as you do each little lace section you decrease stitches in the stockinette section in between yeah and so it, it stacks like it's supposed to that's pretty cool so and then it's got this folded hem a pico edge and then this folded tacked down hem so it was really quick i think i worked on it for two or three days um and then you're done with it and i was done it with looks it. great yeah. too um it'll be, be a gift for walking the dog no so. it'll be a gift for somebody there you go. The accessories I tend to keep are the giant ones, like the huge wraparound things. Yeah, you can always knit one of those. You love those Stephen West brioche shawls, too. Excuse me? You could add another excuse me to your... brioche, especially that I would spin pattern. it for you if you want hand spun for it. I always want hand spun. Okay. Um, come over and pick out some fiber. I also want a hand spun Nubum. I just basically want a new one I can wear every day. Like, one for every day of the week. Oh. Because I have I, two. You have two. I was like, <laughs> would you knit another one? It, I would, as long as it wasn't on a dead launch or... Would you, yeah. I would just knit one out of hand Knit one, stitches think. around and around and around. That's all it is. Yeah. So, um, and then this is the Cables Are Cool hat. This is by Barbara Benson. Um, and this is out of the Irish yarn I was telling you guys about last week. It's called um, Yarn Vibes, and this is in the Veil base. Um, the yellow is pollen, and it's brighter than it's appearing on screen. Let me see if I get closer, if it'll be a little bit more color accurate. Um, it's very Hogwarts house cup colors. Like a gold yellow. Yeah. Sorry. And then like a rust red. It's just not showing up quite as vibrant as it actually is in person. But, yeah, it's sort of in a, in a little bit of orangey red. Oh, this is better right here. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. And then a bright yellow. Um, so this is all done in mosaic. 
so it's all single color per round and slip stitches uh, the pattern was cool it was a little I don't know it was a little awkward getting used to slipping stitches but not working them on some rows it yeah. just depended on what color you were using but the hat is super huge and Slushy. it hasn't been washed, yeah. so it ha it's not relaxing quite like it should yet. But it's super warm. It, um, you know, because it is a hundred percent wool, it'll repel water, yeah, to some degree, and uh, it'll keep you nice and warm it as will. it repels water as well. Yeah, so I'm excited about this hat actually, and I have enough left over probably to do mitts as well. Ooh, look at you. Um, it'll just have the main color on that one will have to be the yellow, yellow which is fine. Um, I liked working with the yarn. It is it is more rustic than, you know, your super wash merino that's, you know, very delicate. It's not a fine wool. It's more of a longer wool staple, would yeah. you say? But this is the kind of yarn I would make a sweater out of as long as I knew I was going to wear a layer underneath. Um, if I was in a climate... It'd be great for steaking. Yes, it would, because it would... The, it would stick the to itself. Like to stick. Um, if I was in a climate where I could get away with layering in regards to wool, then absolutely. But here it rarely gets cold enough to justify a wool sweater. For Leslie. For, For me. me, it's usually cold enough to justify a wool uh, sweater. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoyed working with, with the yarn. And it's, you know, I, I think as a culture we're trying to do some more environmentally responsible you know know where your food comes from know where the products that you use come from yeah. and you know this is from a small family um business so and they cool. use the um method of cleaning the wool that is very very eco-friendly yeah it's the oldest um this is it called suet baths i can't remember but they essentially soak it in way it, without any chemicals or anything in a way that it takes longer but all the dirt comes out naturally well when, when you soak wool there's like a natural um detergent that forms over time and so that's used to clean mm -hmm. as it soaks it's a really cool process i've read about it but yeah. um we can't have open rain barrels here without them being coming, no standing like, water yeah yeah mosquito they just become mosquitoes yeah. so would not without covering it probably work here i was reading up on it it's really interesting um in all transparency this yarn was sent to us for review um but i i am really happy with how it came out i'm i'm happy like i i just really like how it feels i just yeah just want to squish it it makes me happy so good um, i'm glad it makes you happy yeah so those are my finished objects. Cool. I have baby hat. Well, another baby hat. Another um, Tubi by Willie Wormhead is my finished object. So I used a skein of um, hand spun from Nest Yarns, and I got two hats out of it. No problem. These were two sized up, so they are the 14 inches around. Um, let me get to the end of this row, and I will show you them. I was going to give one to my coworker on Monday, but I went into my, I have like a plastic bin, one of the shallower ones that I keep all my gift knits in, and I had three tubey hats already in there. <laughs> so I gave her one of those instead. I gave her one out of um, Encore. So <laughs> it'll be fine. And then I also gave her uh, Where the Wild Things Are onesie from Book Riot, so, because she's an English person. On the plus side, Encore is machine washable. Yeah, that's exactly why that was given there. These would be two because they're super washable, but, you know. So these are my two little tubies. They're a little bit different um, in the color layout, but they came from the same skin of yarn. I have very little left over. I would say that these took around 60 yards each. And then I cast on, so this was out of Nest Hand Spun. And then I have some Joanna Springs Knit Spin Farm. She did these Batlings and Gemstones. Um, so I cast on with those. This is the 16 inch size. So it's the third size from the bottom or the second to largest size. And I started this last Thursday, um, when I finished the other one. So this is the third. It's, this is not going to be machine washable, but it's got these cute little bits of tweed in it. And it goes from black to gray to purple. 
And then there'll be that bright blue in the middle at the very top. So yeah, I'm excited about this as well. I need to replenish my baby nip bin a little bit. So um, this will be a good start to that, these two bee hats. And then I'll have some. I won't have to stress as much next year over baby knits, I think. And that's a good summer baby knits are fun. Yeah. Because they're light. They're not super heavy with the exception of this giant blanket. And they go pretty fast. And that, that pattern's one of my favorites. And it's fairly mindless. So I don't have to think too much about it. So that's what I have next. Kind of still on my needles. But I wanted to put it with the finished objects. Because they all kind of go together. But you have some spinning, friend. Oh, yeah. It's not anything huge. But I, since I couldn't decide what to knit last night, um, I decided I would spin. So um, I left the bag downstairs. Yeah. But I'm spinning on the Daedalus Starling, which I still love. It is silent and... It's an e-spinner. It is. And the, um, they'll be Bumblebee, not Bumblebee, um, Spotted something. You? Is it Spotted You? Now I'm questioning myself because we have Spotted Circus coming in. Here, I'll look it up while you talk. Thank you. Um, they'll be at SSK um, as well. Um, so, yes, I am spinning. This is called Deviant Kraken. It is a colorway by the Homestead Hobbyist that we got at Madrona. Um, I can't remember that guy's name, the Homestead Hobbyist, but he's really funny and nice. And I couldn't really pass his booth without buying anything because he's really funny and nice. And I like to support nice people. So, um... Yeah, it's sort of dark. It's got a black base, so the color is darker than it spotted would be. Spotted you fibers. Spotted you. Okay. I was questioning myself because I know we have Spotted Circus as well. And we have other use. Yeah. So. Well, sheep. Um, yeah, so I, I started the first half of... I spun an ounce like weeks ago, and then it's been it's just been sitting. And I spun the other ounce last night. And I hope to spin more tonight. So it's going to be a two-ply? It'll be a two-ply, yeah. Because okay. it's, you know, it's dark, but it's got subtly yeah, it shifting like colors. it's got a silk blend yeah, to it. That, yeah, it's silk and alpaca and something else. Oh, cool. Um, it's slippery, but not in a bad way. That was from your Madrona mm -hmm. purchasing. Cool. Yep. Um, but I still really, really like that wheel. The only downfall right now is that it doesn't have a foot pedal. Um, but it's in the pro they're in the process of getting that done. And once they do that, then we'll be able to show it off on a review. I'm very excited because I really yeah. like it. Yeah. Probably cool. Um, Laura, for the first time in a long time, has no spinning. Well, I'm working on two sweater spins. Yeah. So I'm working on long drawing some Cordale. Um, and that's almost done for the last bit of that and then I started spinning if you follow me on Instagram you'll see a picture that I posted today I started spinning a pound of CVM um in a lightish gray like a brownish gray mm -hmm. so I have a pound of that to spin so that's going to be two ply I'm hoping to get around 1200 yards of a sport so we'll see how that turns out really I'm hoping for like 1600 yards of a sport but I'll take 1200 so we'll see. I've never spun CVM. I'm spinning it worsted and not woolen. Um, although it is true roving and not top. So we'll see. It's still going to be fairly lofty and airy. Um, as far as reading goes, I'm listening to, well, I'm actually reading a book, which I forgot to link. Um, Liz Gibson mm -hmm. sent home a book with me from um, Marilyn Sheep and Wool. And she published this really cool book about fibers and weaving. And I'm trying to learn more about weaving. Um, it's like the Weaver's Guide to Yarn or something. Yeah, I think so. And so I started reading that on the plane back from Maryland. And then sitting in my bedside table. And I need to finish it. And then I'm listening to Silence Fallen, which is uh, Patricia Briggs' urban paranormal adventure romance, male-female. Um it's like the ninth in the series. So 11th, I'm, according to Amazon. 
That one's the 11th? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the 12th one just came out, and I'm listening to this one before the next one, because I couldn't remember what happened, because she publishes this this series and her other series alternate. Um, It started with, like, Iron something. Every two years. Right. Moon she's, Cult is the first one. Yeah, she works at a, or she owns like a garage mm-hmm. or something, and she lives next to the Shifter King or whatever of the area. Well, she lives next to the Werewolf Alpha. There we go, Werewolf, yeah. There we go. Uh-huh. I, I think I got to like the sixth in that series, and then I got distracted. Yeah. I'll have to go back, because I, I liked it from what I can remember. It is good, and there's some overlap between, I actually like the other series a little bit better. It's not as like everything's gonna turn out okay as a lot no. of other series. and like, there's some definite trigger warnings in that series. She is pretty violently raped at one point. Um, the main character, Mercy, and there's some other like, Patricia Briggs has no problems with killing mm-hmm. off main characters at all. Like, main characters that you're like, oh, oh, oh! Um, they will die. Yeah. So, not the main character so far, but no one is guaranteed a happy ending in a Patricia Briggs book. She also writes, like, pure fantasy. Back in the 90s, she wrote pure fantasy, so there's some good stuff out. Mm -hmm. A lot of libraries have it. A lot of libraries carry her books as well. So if you want to give her a taste, you can do that for free by utilizing your local public library. Um, So that's what I've been reading and listening to. What have you been reading and listening to? Um... Well, I finished the second season of The Handmaid's Tale, and this is a, a show on Hulu. Yeah, it's based on a book. Yes. Um, I went into it with no, like, expectations, because I never read the book. I, I mean, I had an idea of what it was, but I never read the book. I don't tend to do literary fiction often. Um, and then I went... I, it's dystopian, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yes, um, but not in a science fiction way. That can be dystopian. That's yeah, not science fiction. just most of what I've read it tends to be um, science fiction based. But um, I had no like idea about the show before I started it, and I really got into it. Um, it moves a little slow at some points, but it is frightening how easily this dystopia could become real especially I'm going to skip politics but it is very interesting to watch the third season starts sometime this month yeah she's writing a new book Atwood yes Mm -hmm. um so the series is really good um trigger warnings for that as well it is not a happily ever after kind of thing uh Let's see. What am I reading? I'm reading Fused in Fire, which is the third in that series. There's six out right now. Um, I I had read the first two already, but then I forgot what happened, so I reread them, and now I'm on the third one. And I'm listening to... I just started a new book by Rachel Aaron, who is the same author who wrote the Nice Dragons Finish Last series. Yeah. Um... And this one is called Minimum Wage Magic. It's in the same world, yes, correct? Yes, the Detroit Free the Zone. Detroit, mm-hmm. um, and it is, um, I, there's no aspect of romance to it, at least at this point, but it is... Um, Those are more sci-fi. Paranormal, kind of. Well, they're also dystopian. Yeah, because magic comes back to the world, and so the gods, some gods come back, and so they're sort of angry at humanity and take it out. Especially the, like, natural world Mm -hmm. gods, which seem like a common theme. Yeah. Happening recently. And then Audible had a sale, um, like, two-for-one credit sale. Yeah, I saw that. I got a book that I've been looking at for a little while by Damien Eccles called Life After Death. Um, Damien Eccles was the most, quote-unquote, popular of the West Memphis Three. Um, Oh, who were these three? Best known, maybe. Yeah, most well known. Um, they were they were these three teenagers, like fifteen and sixteen or fourteen and fifteen. I can't remember. Um, who were tried and convicted of murdering three little boys, and um, there was essentially no evidence that 
approved it. Was it was overturned. It was overturned, yeah. Over time, like it's in a 2010. Long time. Like they were convicted in 94 or 95. Mm-hmm. And they served time until like 2010 when DNA evidence exonerated them, correct? Well, it didn't exonerate them, but it um, showed proof of someone who wasn't them and wasn't the victim was present in this location. Gotcha. Um, so they did a, I forget what it's called, like an Alford plea, where it's like, it's not guilty, but it's, um, there's, you know, there's not enough evidence to reasonably prove that, whatever. I, I'm not a lawyer, but I read a little bit about it. But the West Memphis Three is, probably was my first exposure to, like, big a big crime, big murder, because I lived in this area. And yeah, West, West Memphis, Memphis is, is Arkansas. That's what they call Arkansas, which is on the other side of Memphis. Mm-hmm. So Memphis, um, which is Tennessee, Arkansas, and Mississippi they all, all meet, meet yeah. in a triangle at the Mississippi River. And we're about half an hour from West Memphis right yeah. now. And that West Memphis now is known um, mainly because they allow gambling. Yeah. So it's like a big area to go and... Uh, do like track gambling type yeah. stuff, but it's really it's a really interesting case. HBO has done three different um, documentary series on it. Paradise Lost. Um, they're all very interesting. So, if you like true crime, yeah. this might be a good choice for you. Yes. Well, I haven't listened to enough of it. This particular book is about. Um, apparently he stayed positive the whole time he was in prison, mm-hmm. which is almost ironic because when he was convicted, he was very goth. He was very, you know, hmm. and that was, they say that was one of the reasons that they, you know, that he was yeah. framed or whatever. I don't know enough about law. So if I'm getting this terribly wrong, I'm sorry. And it's, I'm not insinuating police officers did anything wrong. I have no idea. It's just, it was just a very big case at the time. Okay. So that's what I've been listening to. Okay. Um, upcoming events. We will be at Stitches United right. in Atlanta this coming Thursday and Friday morning, part probably. of Friday. Yeah. Um, you can find us wandering around there. If you do see us, come say hi. Um, class signups for SSK are tomorrow, Friday. Probably by the time you see this, they'll May be May 24th. And um, so we'll stash dash begin. So both those things are happening tomorrow. So uh, we covered this in the stash dash video, but a gentle reminder, stash dash is a competition against you. You are competing against you. So don't, don't, feel don't set unrealistic yeah. goals for yourself. Or do, but enjoy it. Yeah. If that's your game, you know, yeah. rock on. with do You do you. Oh, you didn't bring up your stuff that you overdied. I did not. Because I want to do the top again. But, yes, it is something I will show at some point. So Leslie overdied some of her sweaters, and she'll show those um, at a future time. We have some Patreon supporter stuff going on, so... You can support us via Patreon. There's a link on our blog, which is the Nick Girls with three L's dot com. I'll Thank put you it in so the show much as well. Um, to everyone who supports us mm-hmm. on Patreon. It allows us as well to support some of our favorite makers. Yeah. Um, and you can see who we support if you just click on our name. Yeah. Um, um so Patreon. we do uh, fail along with that where we fail miserably. This time we're playing Pictionary. It's going to be terrible. I'm super enthused about it. Yeah. And, um, we also have a VKN scheduled on Sunday. So the VKN will be Sunday at... No, oh. fail along a Sunday. Oh. No, you're right. No, VKNs are you're always correct. last Sunday. You are correct. Month. VKN is Sunday at 11. And then the fail along is Monday, Memorial Day. We decided to do it on a weekday, even though we typically don't, because most people are off that day. We feel yeah. like most people are off that day. Um, if you can't participate, I'm sorry. We, you know, we'll go back we to a weekend. Move around um, quite a bit with those ones. And that's at I think one o'clock. But if you do miss something, um, and you're a Patreon supporter, you can always go back and watch it. Yeah, and view it later. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what else. I think that's about it. Yep. Um, like Laura said, if you see us at. Um, Stitches. Stitches United, come and say hi and chat with us. Yeah, I have to do my homework still. 
Yeah, I have to go and get... I, I have most of the stuff I need, but I need two yards of a woven fabric, so I just need to go by Joanne's okay. at some point this weekend. And Because Leslie's taking knitting classes. I'm taking nope. a spinning... Or not spinning, I'm taking a knitting. sewing class. You're taking sewing, I'm taking knitting. There we go. Yes. I'm taking an all-day class with Cal Patch about um, making clothes fit you and making a muslin and all that, so... And I'm taking basically an intarsia class with Laura Lee Beltman. So that'll be exciting. And you've met Laura Lee before and really yeah, liked her. Yeah, so. DFW. She's super sweet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. So um, we hope that you have a nice Memorial Day if you get that day off. Um, if you're in well, the States. Regardless, you can have a nice Memorial this Day. Is true. <laughs> Only if you get the day off. <laughs> um. You can have a nice Monday, too. And otherwise, we'll talk to you next week. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.